You want to know a joke? CNN. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I'll tell the most unfunny dad joke ever and then proceed to laugh at my own joke. I, I acknowledge how insufferable I am sometimes, so I apologize for that. Look, the point is CNN is blatantly biased against Bernie Sanders. That's what I'm trying to convey to you, the viewer. And as someone who has had membership to the Brotherhood of the Bernard for many years now, um, I can spot it easily. But they're making it easier to spot because they're being so brazen. So in an interview with Bernie Sanders campaign manager Faiz Shakir, um, what they did here was just shameless. They cherry-picked data to make Bernie Sanders appear less electable than he is in actuality, and then proceeded to falsely say that Bernie Sanders actually doesn't even have support of the Democratic Party base. His policies are not popular among the Democratic Party. Now, I think that Faiz did a pretty good job at shutting down this misinformation and pushing back, but we'll watch, and then I have, you know, some commentary to supplement this clip, because it's just Again, it's shameless not to be redundant. No, no, go ahead. I, I, we, did, we want to talk a little bit yeah. about socialism, <laughs> too, and, and we both have a few questions for you on socialism because we heard it was on this program yesterday that House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said this is the new Democratic Socialist majority, which maybe you guys embraced, right, because of the, the position of Senator Sanders as a socialist. Um, is that helpful, though, to the Democratic Party overall, do you guys think? Well, so let me, let me just say about Donald Trump, who's attacking in a very racist way four uh, really members just of... God. tight on time and asking right, you right. about I just, that I just want to say like that what he's doing is attacking them because their policies which is free tuition at uh, public colleges and universities re canceling student debt Medicare for all instead of having that debate about policies he wants to take it into a racist place what I'm saying is those policies are quite popular and, w and instead of having that debate on policies he's trying to elide that debate we think that this is the popular approach to go. Americans support this but across the, the board. But the numbers don't support it, actually. I mean, there's an ABC New Washington Post poll that found that Trump would beat a candidate perceived as a socialist by 49 percent to 43 percent, whereas other candidates uh, Jim, not perceived as socialists w would beat him. So I'm just curious, are you convinced you have the public behind you? Jim, there's, there's a guy with the name Bernie Sanders. And I hope you will take a look at Bernie Sanders against Donald Trump and look at those head-to-head -head numbers and then report back to me what you find, Jim, because I think you will find in the 25 of the last 25 polls, Bernie Sanders is beating Donald Trump head to head in every poll out there. Uh, Can you challenge the me on that? Though, well, I could challenge you on the position because we're talking about positions that are his signature issues, and which I'm don't have Bernie the Sanders. backing uh, of the majority of Democratic <laughs> voters. And of course, those issues are going to be discussed, you know, hey, at absolutely. Length in the coming months. And what do you think, Jim, that most people know about Bernie Sanders? Do you, what do you think they know about him? He ran for president before in head to head mm -hmm. in places like Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania. He's crushing Donald Trump. How do you explain that to me, Jim? Well, listen, we'll let the voters decide. I'm just saying on the issues okay. that you're making, your signature issues, the, the, the polls show they don't back those particular issues. And as voters listen, learn right. about those issues, that might be factored into their decision. We're going to keep up the conversation because we have a lot of time till November 2020. Okay. Come Thank back, you. Faz. Come Thank back soon, okay? We, we really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Listen, Faiz, let's cut to the chase. I just want you to accept and admit that socialism is bad. Can you just do that for me? Or if not, we're just, you know, we're going to cut off your mic. I mean, that's what it seemed like, you know, they were kind of leading towards. But he cited a poll where it found that someone who was perceived to be a socialist would lose to Donald Trump. Trump would win 49 to 43 percent. And then he poses the question, are you convinced that the public would be behind you given the results of this poll? Except what's the obvious response? You cherry picked the data. When you look at 29 polls, Bernie Sanders beats Donald Trump 28 times. And in the one poll where he loses to Donald Trump, other candidates weren't faring too well either. So Faiz was almost correct in saying Bernie Sanders beats Trump in 25 out of the last 25 polls. Maybe he's referring to internal polls. But I mean, the point is Bernie Sanders performs very well in hypothetical matchups against Donald Trump. And most importantly, he's beating Trump in the Rust Belt states that Hillary lost. And the last poll that just came out showed Bernie beating Trump by seven points. That's outside the margin of error. So by citing one poll that shows that Donald Trump would perform well against a generic socialist Democrat, you're not educating your viewers. You're cherry-picking data 
in order to lend credence to this claim that, you know, a socialist would be inherently less electable against Donald Trump. But the data doesn't actually show that. I know you have that one poll, but we look at aggregate polling data if we want to be the most accurate because that's the most reliable. Like if you take any one poll, sure, there can be some value in that, but you just look like a liar. Like I understand that CNN wants to present themselves as neutral arbiters of information, but you're not helping with that case here when you do things like this. Now, another quote that I wanted to get here, uh, get to here, we're talking about positions which are his signature issues, which don't have the backing of the majority of Democratic voters. Now, he said this twice. Now, Bernie Sanders is a populist. He has the backing. His policies are backed by a majority of people. When you look at most of his policies, most Americans support it. But when you actually control for Democratic Party voters, they especially back Bernie's policy ideas. So what are you talking about? I mean, let's just look at Bernie Sanders and his signature policy proposal, for example, Medicare for All. So when you look at this poll that was conducted between June 29th and July 1st from the Morning Consult, it found that Democrats are actually the most supportive, I repeat, the most supportive of Medicare for All. And a majority of Democrats still support it even when you tell them it diminishes the role of private insurers. But 78% support it when you tell them that they get to keep their doctors and still go to the same hospital. So, I mean, what are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? The policies that Bernie Sanders are promoting, they have majority support, but they're especially popular among Democratic Party voters. And it's not just Medicare for All. The Green New Deal is supported by over 90% of Democrats. A poll from May showed that Elizabeth Warren's plan to cancel most student debt has majority support. So I could only imagine that Bernie's plan to cancel 100% of student loan debt is even more popular, especially among Democrats. Most Americans support free college and raising the minimum wage. The overwhelming majority of Americans support paid maternity leave and government funding for childcare. And as I tell you about how popular all of these policies are that Bernie Sanders is proposing, they're popular among the majority of the population for the most part, but they are especially popular among Democratic Party voters. So what are you saying? These are incredibly popular policies among the Democratic Party base. And that's what you want to do to win an election, especially a primary. You throw out policies that you know will excite the base. It sounds to me like you just are not excited. You and your rich colleagues at CNN, who probably get paid six-figure salaries every single year to espouse corporate talking points, seems like you're the one who doesn't like this. And maybe you identify as a Democrat and you're a Democrat voter. I don't know what the case is. But what you're saying is factually incorrect. It's demonstrably untrue. And you should feel ashamed of yourself to say something like this. Because it's a verifiable lie. We could just look at one public opinion poll on any given policy from Bernie Sanders. And most of the time, that particular policy that he is championing will be supported by a majority of Americans and especially Democratic Party voters. But Fayez, again, he did a great job at shutting down this bias, but I mean, how are you supposed to expect us to take you seriously when you keep doing things like this? Like, this isn't a one-off. This isn't a one-off. You keep presenting biased information, you clearly have contempt for Bernie Sanders and his supporters, and you expect us to trust you, really? You're not calling it like you see it. You're not calling balls and stripes. It's evidence to everyone watching that you're trying to construct a narrative. You want voters to believe Bernie Sanders is less electable so they don't vote for him. So they vote for someone like Joe Biden who will maintain the corporate status quo. Uh, not going to happen. Because in the age of the internet, we can actually look stuff up now. We don't just have to take your word for it. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>